Okay, so welcome back to this video uh, where we are transforming uh, the PDF of a bivariate uh, probability, um, a bivariate random variable. Okay, so what we have, the problem we've been considering is if we have R2 here, and we have some mapping G, uh, which is mapping R2 onto another version of R2 over here, so it's mapping R2 onto R2, and we've already discussed how G uh, because G is mapping an ordered pair, so let's say a little x and a little y, onto another ordered pair, let's say u and v, then we can think of G as having two components, basically. We can think of G as being u, which is a function of x and y, i.e. the u component of this ordered pair. The first element in this ordered pair depends on both your x and your y position. And we can also think it all, uh, of it as having a V component, which again depends on both the X and the Y component. So these are both real valued functions of R2. So they take every point of R2 and they map it onto a single real number. And together, when put together like this, that gives you the whole function G. And it tells you, uh, given any ordered pair in here, which ordered pair to ascribe it in here, basically. Okay, uh, so we've seen that if you take a little box, basically, an infinitesimal little box of side then delta x, let's say this is delta x, and psi events delta y, and if we transform that into this, uh, into this R2 here, then uh, in general it won't go to another box, it won't go to another square, it will go to a little parallelogram. Of course this is if you make delta x and delta y small enough, you can approximate this as being a parallelogram. Uh, if they're big, if they're big like I've drawn them here, then it won't work at all. Uh, you won't, um, well, uh, it, it, well, it will work. Um, but um, but it won't be true to say that the image of this box is the parallelogram. The way we've done, the way we've calculated what this uh, box is, we've said, okay, uh, we'll take these three points. So we we took these three corner points here, and we said transform them into uh, this new probability space. And you can do that. You can certainly do that. However big this box is, and then we've said, okay, uh, make those two vectors like that, and we'll say that the box, the image, we're saying that the image of the box is basically the uh, parallelogram suspended between those two vectors. That is, oh, that statement that. Uh, the image of the box is the uh, the parallelogram suspended between those two vectors is only true if these two uh, two vectors delta x and delta y are very very small. If not, then you're you're talking rubbish. Basically, the parallelogram will not be the image of this box. Okay, so you need to make them very very small if you want the image of the box to be this parallelogram spanned by these two. Um, Two little uh, two images of these vectors delta x and delta y. Okay, uh, so um, what we then did is we calculated that the area of this parallelogram was going to be given by uh, u x, the partial derivative of this u component with respect to x, uh, times what was it times by? It was times by v y, and then we subtracted off um, u y. Uh, ui uh, times vx, basically. Now, uh, and then it was times delta x, delta y. So basically, delta x, delta y is the area of this little box here. This is the correction, basically. This is the thing that you have to multiply it by to turn it into the area of this parallelogram. And this here is basically the determinant of a matrix. Uh, this, you, this, well, this constant is, uh, right, okay, start again. The bit inside here, the bit inside the modulus sign has a name. That is called the Jacobian of uv with respect to xy. This, uh, this combination of the partial derivatives is known as the Jacobian, and it's actually equal to the determinant of a matrix. So it's actually the determinant of the matrix ux, vx, uy, vy. And this is said to be this is this matrix is called the matrix of partial derivatives and is very very important. It's uh, something that if this function is differentiable, you can calculate the matrix of partial derivatives. So it's something that's fundamental to the function matrix of partial derivatives. And in a way, you should think of it as the higher dimensional analog of just the derivative in R two in uh, in a single in single variable calculus. In multivariable calculus, you can't just form uh, one what uh, a single partial derivative doesn't give you 
you enough information. This, however, is almost like the analogue of the derivative. It contains all the information about all of the calculus, all of the derivatives everywhere on the function. So this is almost the analogue. This contains the same sort of level of information as the derivative in, the, in, in a single variable calculus. So this is the matrix of partial derivatives. Okay, and if you take the determinant of that, that's said to be the Jacobian of u uh, v with respect to x y. Okay, and this forms the pl this takes the place of the derivative in that equation for transforming. You know, in the single variable case, we had uh, the derivative was the way in which we transformed the interval delta x into the interval delta y, basically. Here, if you want to transform uh, this little in this little square into its area over here. This is the constant you need, and you need more than just this, you need the, the modulus of this. So we can write that this is equal to the modulus of the Jacobian of uv with respect to xy, basically. Okay? Uh, at times delta x, delta y. Right, so that gives us everything we wanted to know, because if we go back to our original problem, uh, where is our original problem now? Um, have I still got it? Ah, here it is. Here is our original problem. Uh, so we wanted to work out if we've got a little... We wanted we wanted to do the opposite thing, basically. We want to take a little box in here, in this uh, codomain, and pull it back into the domain and work out what area uh, is the parallelogram in the little domain in the um, in this um, co in this do in the domain basically when you pull back this little box in the codomain how what's the area in the in the uh, of this parallelogram here well basically it's going to be one over this and how can i intuitively give you an argument for that it's for the same re this tells you how to transfer this box into here now Basically, if you look at the inverse, if you... Right, okay, how can I give you an intuitive argument? The reason is that um, if we want the matrix of partial derivatives for the inverse, if we wanted to calculate the Jacobian going the other way, if we want to calculate the Jacobian of xy with respect to uv, let's say, Okay, so we want to calculate the other way round. We want to calculate if we've got a little box in here going back to there. Well, basically, this matrix of partial derivatives, the matrix of the partial derivatives for the inverse is actually the inverse matrix of this. The reason is that this matrix of partial derivatives tells you how to transform a little vector here into a little vector there. If you multiply uh, uh, a vector by this matrix in the matrix multiplication way, then it transforms any vector here into a tiny little vector here. It's infinitesimal. It has to be an infinitesimal vector. It has to be very, very small for this to work. Uh, well, for it to uh, even approximately work. Uh, but uh, the reason it does that is that if you imagine what matrix multiplication means, you've got two components, A, B, in your vector here. And when you multiply them by this matrix, what you'll get is Ux uh, v v sorry, Vx times a plus uy vy times b basically because you're multiplying this component with this vector here this component with this vector here and then you add those together basically to get what this overall equals i.e. you'll get a single vector out but this is basically what a single a, a unit vector in the x direction will go to because if you change just the x direction how much will you change the u and the y v components well the way the amount you'll change the u component is uh, the partial derivative u with respect to x and this is how much you'll change the v component so that tells you how much uh, it, the um, how much those two vectors those two components the u component and the v component will change if you just change the x component this will tell you how much it changes if you just change the y component so if you multiply it by a and by b which is the amount by which you change the x and the y component respectively uh, then that will overall give you what this tiny little vector is in here basically so if we want the equivalent matrix for the inverse function it's just going to be the inverse matrix because if you have it basically it's just matrix uh, it's just vector operations here because if the new vector let's say is a bar b bar then if you want to convert this vector back into this vector you need to multiply it by the inverse matrix of this so the matrix of partial derivatives for the inverse function is actually the inverse of this so if we want to calculate this Jacobian it will be the determinant of this inverse matrix and the determinant of the inverse matrix is just one over the determinant of the other mate of the original matrix, i.e., uh, these two matrices are reciprocals of one. These sorry, these two determinants are reciprocals of one another. So if we take their absolute values, uh, they um, 
then again the absolute values will be reciprocals of one another like that. So basically if you want to convert a little box in here back into a parallelogram here, all you need to do is uh, well, either uh, divide well divide through by this Jacobian, basically, which is m the equivalent of multiplying through by this Jacobian, the modulus of this Jacobian. So we want uh, we want uh, we're starting in R two in our codomain. So we're starting in this probability space here. We have a point little u little v, and we've said that we've pulled this back to our original R two, where we had a uh, point x and y. And now what we want to do is to take this little area, uh, which is a little box, which is delta u times delta v, and we want to pull it back into a parallelogram, and we want to know what's the area of that parallelogram. Well, the, way, the area of that parallelogram is just uh, delta u delta v, the area of this little box, divided by this Jacobian here, and I'm sorry, it's not in view at all. Uh, so divide that by this Jacobian here, the modulus of this Jacobian, which is del uh, uv del x y. Okay, so that gives us basically the area of this little parallelogram here, and I hope I've given you at least some intuition as to why it gives the area of that little parallelogram there. So, now what we need to know is what is the probability of this little parallelogram here, but we know the probability of a tiny little um, little box like that, a uh, parallelogram like that. It's just the area of that parallelogram multiplied by uh, whatever the probability density function is at that point. So if we just multiply this by the joint probability density function evaluated at x, y, okay, uh, where x, y we've agreed, x, y is the inverse image of the point u, v. So if I take a g inverse of u, v, then I'll get x, y basically. So, this basically becomes uh, the probability, um, we wanted the probability density function of this transformed random variable x, y, as a function of um, uv, delta u, delta v, okay, well we can cancel off the delta u and delta v now, because this is just equal to this, because this, remember, was the probability that you're in this little um, square, and basically we're saying that that is equal to this thing here, which uh, we just shown. Okay, so we'll cancel off this delta u and this delta v, and then what we get is that the uh, transformed random variable, the probability density function of this transformed by variant random variable as a function of uv is equal to the uh, transformed, uh, well, the original uh, probability density function as a function of x and y, but remember, the way you get x and y is you say, okay, uh, take the inverse image of this point uv, the point xy is the point that uv is mapped, was, sorry, the point xy was mapped onto the point uv by g, and it was the only such point that satisfied that condition, because we said this function was injective. Uh, it, the might, because it didn't need to be subjective, if you insist that g is a bijection, this gets simpler, because you could just insert in g inverse there. But, uh, in the case that um, the um, this, there will be some points in here that don't have an inverse image in here, potentially, if it's not a subjective function, there will be, uh, then uh, those you'll just describe the probability density function of 0 to. Okay, so you take this, these points, I hope you understand what these points x and y are, uh, uh, it's just notation, there isn't really a good notation for stick, I suppose what we could do is we could say x inverse of uv if we were being really rigorous, we could put that in there. So if you want, you can replace those x's with the x inverse of this point uv, and this is the y inverse of this point uv, and then we put in this Jacobian of uv with respect to x, y. Again, this is evaluated at a point, so we should really put evaluated at the point x, y, where x, y, again, is this x inverse of uv, y inverse of uv. Okay, so that basically is how to transform a bivariate uh, joint random variable, um, how to transform the probability density function of a bivariate random variable.